Hey, welcome everyone into the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Counterpoint. Thanks for joining us today. I'm joined here once again by Adam, the parts master, parts I'm guru. Back. I'm back. Thanks for Just, being here, Adam. No problem. So today in front of us, we have a couple of pedals. Yes. What are we working with? Accelerator pedal position sensors. That's okay. That's a big thing here. So as you can tell, you know, if you ever take a look down below, there's more to an accelerator pedal than just this these days. <laughs> right, so, yeah. They're, they're pretty you know, complex we units. This, we have some really complex and, you know, some basic. But there is definitely more going on there. So sure. A, there's a sensor down there that we sure. have. It's yeah. serviceable. So. Yeah, gone are the days of the uh, throttle cable going up to your throttle body, everything being manually controlled. These systems are very, very smart and very fast and very accurate. And they have to be because we don't want to have a runaway car problem. That's right. Basically, this is going to use a couple position sensors inside of this that's going to monitor the pedal's position wherever you put your foot. That's going to then send the signal out to the engine computer. The engine computer is going to then send a signal out to the electronic throttle body controller or TAC module or electronic throttle body or whatever it happens mm -hmm. to be called in your model. But it's going to send a signal to this and it's going to move the throttle body accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now what's interesting about these systems is that that doesn't really give you 100% complete control over these. If we have a failure in the system, if there's a sensor issue or a throttle position uh, sensor issue, what can happen? Uh, you can have drivability. big thing is drivability issues. Sure. So you can have a deep power, you can um, check engine lights. You get that little message on the dash, exactly. right? Exactly, you have that. You, just, you, you may be down to like 5% power. It could be, yeah. Uh, you get just that reduced power the side mode. Of the road. Yep. Um, yeah, things like that. The big thing is, I guess, check engine light or you check gauges or... Yep, reduce power, uh -huh. limp mode. Uh -huh. um, basically, you lose control of the throttle yes. system because at that point the computer's worried that it, there could be a runaway yeah, for problem. for safety reasons. So why don't we just take a quick second, I got a marker here and a whiteboard, yeah. let's look at what these sensors are. So we have to have at least two sensors in this pedal so that it can check itself because one will go one direction and sometimes the other will go opposite they'll scale voltage opposite or they'll scale linearly at different rates. So if we have, um, let's draw up a graph here. Let's call this, this is gonna be volts. And let's call this five volts up here, zero volts down here. And then we have a time window. So you start to push on the pedal. One of them is most likely gonna go like this. And now the second sensor is gonna depend on, on the vehicle at that point. Is it going to scale this way. So are we going to have a 5 volt to 0 volt scaling or are we going to have something like this where maybe we start at you know a, a different um, different voltage level so we could scale something like this potentially. So there's a lot of different ways that this can work but basically we're gonna we're gonna have to cross our sensor somewhere so the computer is mm -hmm. gonna watch these points, and as long as they cross where the computer wants them to, mm -hmm. the sensor checks out and it's just fine. But if they don't cross at the right point, we have a, an issue, a correlation issue between the two sensors. We set a trouble code, put the vehicle potentially into limp mode or reduced power mode, and we have a failure at that point. Yeah. Or if we have a voltage reading here, and all of a sudden our single signal drops out like this, we go out to zero and then it comes back at some point, like this, this is a failure also. The computer will do the same thing. It'll set a trouble code and we will lose control over our throttle and our throttle body and our vehicle will not accelerate like it's supposed to. So it's, it's a safety feature really that's built in with these because we don't want to have, we don't want to have potential issues. Mm -hmm. So let's just talk about what pedals we have here in front of yeah, us so today. today. Today we have, uh, we have foreign and domestic here actually. Okay. So we have a Nissan. So this pedal right here is a Nissan 350Z, roughly 03 to 08. Okay, mid 2000s yep. pedal. And this one's kind of unique in two things. One, the sensor that's mounted to this, this comes as an assembly. The sensor that's mounted to this has oblong holes. So if you were to loosen these two screws here, you could adjust this sensor on here. I don't recommend it. It's no. adjusted at the factory. Yes. So you'd have to be messing with voltage levels and that kind of thing, don't do it. This thing is adjusted at the factory. There's a paint mark across the screw to the housing. Make sure it stays there. You don't want to go messing with this thing. These things are pre-set up, and that's why we get it as an assembly. As assembly, that's right. Also, Nissan has a relearn procedure for this pedal. If you were to disconnect it, if you were to um, potentially lose enough voltage in the battery, or if you were to change this pedal, we need to do a relearn procedure. 
Nissan's procedure is pretty easy. It's just a simple um, step one, make sure that the pedal is fully released. So make sure it's back at its home position. Turn the ignition key on for two seconds, turn it off for 10 seconds, on for two seconds again, and off for 10 seconds. And that's, and that's, it. that's, that's yeah, it. That's Super it, super simple. But if you don't do that procedure, you're probably gonna get a code and it's not gonna operate it's not gonna properly. Function. Yeah. Or, okay, mm -hmm. so that's, that's the Nissan one. Yes. What do we got next? Yeah, we have a Ford. Uh, this is pretty common. Uh, it's a monster of a unit. Navigators, things like that, 2011, 12. So the big thing with this one is, this one's set up for adjustable pedals. Okay, so, so you got the, this is all the switch yes. on the dash to bring your pedals either closer <laughs> or further away from you. Yep, and this is why it's, All right. Uh, so basically, this is still just a pedal position sensor, and our pedal, this add-on unit back here, this is the motor that's gonna move our pedal. Mm -hmm. So if we were to give it power and ground, we would see our pedal unit come closer or further away from the bracket right here. And then this is not a throttle cable. This is the cable that actually goes over to the brake pedal unit, and it actually is driven by the motor and spins the brake pedal up and down mm -hmm. also. So kind of an interesting unit. It's a mm -hmm. big unit, but... Um, Okay, that's the Ford yeah. one. We have the GMC. This is the GMC Acadia. Okay. So, relatively so, simple looking. Yeah, yeah very simple looking design. Here, Nothing so. really added on here. We've got six wires going to it, so probably just a two, mm -hmm. two sensor unit. Um, no sort of, of uh, relearn associated with this one. Yeah. Um, there are going to be relearns with some. There's going to be plug and play with others. So, you, service information is going to be your friend when dealing with these things. Mm -hmm. So, okay. This is a big thing, you know, we wanted to bring this up because first of all, we have a full line of these and second of all, this is something you normally don't look at. Right, yeah, you don't normally stick your head under the dash and look at these. To take a look at your accelerator. Uh, if, you know, you think it looks the same as it did in the 90s, 80s, 70s, you know, yeah. 40s. Yeah, we'd see a hook on here yeah. that you would hook your cable up exactly. to and, and then you're good to go. You just manually, yep, manually drive it. It's not that way it. anymore. So, so it's just we, something to be, uh, yep. take a look. Yeah, we get the mechanical aspect out of it. We don't have to worry about stretched cables or rusty cables or binding cables anymore. Now we got to worry about position sensors and uh, are they doing the right thing. And also, I don't know if I mentioned it, we talked about two sensor scaling, but it is possible that some TPS, or excuse me, APPSs are going to use a three sensor system. I know for a fact Ford uses three sensors. You would see something like this then, a scaling zero to five, scaling zero to five where they're going linearly up together. They're not always gonna maintain parallel. They're gonna probably go at a different rate and then you'll get one that crosses. So there are gonna be some out there that use um, three sensors internal to that thing. And that's just again for verification, making sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. So, okay. That's a big thing. Well, that's, yep. that's probably about it for accelerator pedal position sensors. Not too complicated, not very hard to change this thing. This big unit here looks like uh, yeah, three, three bolts, bolts, a connector, and you, you hook this thing up. So they're not going to be no. super complicated to change. But two bolts in this one. We do offer the full line. Yes, and we um, I'm glad to help you out. Yeah, that out. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, I think that's going to be it. So thanks for watching today and, and joining us in the Wells Tech Garage, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.